All right, so let's get back to imagery for a second. And this is a really fascinating example of what they call upscaling or up -resing. And you sometimes have a blurry image. And this is kind of cool because this is a mid-journey image, but you can see that it gets a little blurry when you zoom in. Well, running it through Magnific gives it a whole lot more texture. So look at this face. It completely makes it, it actually interpolates, it guesses. So a lot of this stuff, like look at this leg down here. If I zoom in um, and show you the level of detail that it gets is really impressive. And it even can make things up, which is kind of scary, like this guy's face, boom. And I think that's fun to show you like this Laura Croft on Tomb Raider, what some geeks did, but this was the old video game and how well it makes her into a realistic person, which is just crazy. So I think that that is a really neat tool a little bit scary sometimes too, but for um, playing with upscaling imagery is really, really fascinating. If you have something blurry that you want to use for a website, uh, you have a low res version of it, take it into Magnific and see um, how it does. Okay, getting on to a couple other practical things. If you're into creating videos, long form videos especially, and you want to create short stories out of it, say you have like a rectangular landscape image video, and Opus Clip can not only help you make it into like vertical stories for your Instagram, it can snip out automatically pertinent one minute clips. I think it's pretty cool. Ultimately, I like a little bit more granularity over my um, editing. And what I use is a tool called Descript, which is also really cool because it can take out ums and ahs. I'll just show you a recent project. It can take out ums and ahs. Uh, you know, it can actually recenter your eyeballs, which is fascinating on um, the screen. If you're looking off to the side, it can do a pretty good job recentering eyeballs. Uh, it can make your sound sound better. If it's an audio only, you can actually replace parts of it with uh, by typing in text. It can mimic your voice to intro if you say something wrong, you can edit it completely out and or if you miss something in the middle of a sentence, you can put something in. So it's pretty fascinating. And then you can also, as you go through like your uh, episode, this is my for my podcast, I can create a new composition really easily and duplicate to a new composition just to show you. And then when I open it, here's what I can do. I can edit the video just like I'm editing text. So if I wanted to, you know, take out this part, I could take that out and it's immediately, it's immediately there. Uh, I can also just edit it a little bit because then I can apply, um, for example, I could take this even, this part, and I could put it at the beginning. I'm literally just editing video like I'm copying and pasting text. And then I could choose a template. First of all, I can make this um, portrait and uh, actually then just say, here's a template that I made of me. Actually, that won't work. I have to do um, the right uh text let me over the right head which is right here so um, it automatically will use this template frame me as I've set it up and create captions and then that's ready to be published as a one-minute story so I love Descript I think it's really really fascinating and um, it's just completely changing the way we do things which is neat so um, I can do I can close that so that's Descript all right, another couple of fun things is you might be making videos that you want to share in other languages. Well, this is pretty easy. I just uploaded one of my YouTube videos. In fact, I didn't even upload it. I just gave, made the I just gave the YouTube link to the video and then it made my video all about Descript actually into Chinese. Pretty cool, right? Well, what's even more cool is when you can take videos and imagery and actually dub them in different languages using your voice. If you, I think, have to have the paid version to use your voice, otherwise it just does a standard voice. But also, um, it can take an image and start it talking. So look at this. Happy Christmas, everyone. Did you know I speak many languages? Well, here's some weird holiday customs from around the this world. This was my Christmas card. Abans de Nadal, els habitants de Catalunya dibuixen una cara and so de la família Catalan Japanese German Many homes include a pickle ornament 
And so it did a pretty good job with the lips, but obviously it couldn't figure out what the hat was because this is kind of an irregular thing having a bobble hat. So the bobble always stays there, which I think is pretty funny, but still a really cool tool. And you can imagine if you were just the, um, it, it can actually, I believe, chop out the background too. And then you could just have this be the little um, kind of avatar talking at the bottom corner of your video. And when the face is that small, it's really pretty convincing. I mean, it's already pretty convincing, but especially convincing when the um, it's just like a little talking head on the video in like an explainer video or a promo video or something like that. All right, so the next couple of ones I'm not going to get too into, <clears throat> but I do think it's important to just show you what's possible. Tools like Pitch allows you to create slideshows right from a prompt, and it'll even put the design together for you, and then you can go in and edit it. You can share it with a team. You can continue to like uh, make AI-related imagery for your presentations and other sorts of things, even help you write the text and whatnot. This is ultimately gonna be integrated into things like Keynote or PowerPoint already, I think is uh, integrating it in the latest versions of PowerPoint with something Microsoft calls Copilot, which is gonna be your assistant across all of Microsoft's apps. They're really going fast at how to, to do all this stuff. It's really cool. They're also the majority shareholder in OpenAI and ChatGPT, so no doubt they're investing a lot in this technology. So, but anyways, this could be for sales pitch decks or, you know, investor decks, uh, anything worth checking out if you need to create a quick presentation and you don't like doing it, it can create a, a first version for you really quickly. A couple two that I thought were interesting to include is Durable, which is, it claims to get your business online in 30 seconds with, as the number one AI website builder and marketing platform. I haven't really used it yet, but from looking at things, it can actually do quite a lot of stuff from blogs, I mean, even invoices and CRM. So, and I bet you this is just gonna grow. Um, and so this is definitely something interesting. I bet you can build it and even register the domain name right from here if you want a simple website. Talk about putting me and my old business out of business. Uh, although there's nothing like a real web designer, if you, especially if you need custom stuff for any of these graphics that we've talked about in web design. I'm always happy to help you out with that. Just head over to projectfresh.com and I do pretty much all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, and a lot more efficiently now that I can use AI for a lot of it. Okay, also Framer is another web design uh, tool to use. It's a little bit more robust, I think. It can actually, you know, really do some stuff that maybe um, Durable doesn't quite have yet. Also, I think that there's an element of some customization tools, especially when talking to, um, when you're a little bit more technical, this could be a good one to explore. At a certain point, uh, you, you know, there's a lot of existing internet uh, web making tools, like you're just gonna have to learn a new platform. Um, I've never used this one, but hey, it could be fun to try. Um, okay, so getting into the last couple of tabs that I have is, this is an interesting link because it's got a hundred of this guy's favorite tools and it's not really organized in any way, it's just his top 100. Could be interesting for you to look through and just see if there's any tools that you might be interested in trying for your workflow. Another way to um, find the best tools is something called um, Super Tools, which uh, a great newsletter that I'm part of creates this and manages this and you can search for things like, you know, actually you can search up here for like podcast um, and let's see what it comes up with. Oh, I have to write it again, podcast. And so yeah, there's a few different, oh, and there's Descript, so it has, it's in there and a few other interesting things that could be fun to explore that are related to podcasts. Ultimately, I also wanna just get you organized or get you uh, inspired to lean on Google. Um, so for example, I search AI slide deck creator and it's Google's still great, even though all this other stuff's happening. This will still find not only sponsored links to like beautiful uh, AI or uh, typeset, gamma, those are all sponsored, but also Dectopus, you know, I'm surprised Pitch isn't uh, one of these top ones. Beautiful is there, Gamma again, those are. Um, so, Tome I've heard is another good one, Slides AI. There's Pitch, finally all the way down here. But as you can see, there's lots of tools for every single task that you wanna do. So, I hope this has been useful. I hope this has been inspiring and hopefully you are feeling more efficient and productive than ever. All right, everybody, thanks again, bye.